Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mill Road Church Online. What a beautiful day uh, to be here together in this community of faith. So uh, to start this week outright, let's join our voices together in worship. But before we do, if you would, go ahead and share this program so that we can invite all of your Facebook friends and family to come and to join in with us this morning. All right, so let's go ahead together and let's lift our voices in praise and worship to our great King. Hi, good morning. It's so great to have you here today. Uh, why don't you just join us today? We're going to offer up a, a sacrifice of worship this morning. Join us in praises and worship to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ready? Here we go.
and you silenced every lie and no other voice will define I belong to you I belong to you by your blood I've been adopted I have taken on your name and I need to be reminded that I belong to you I belong to you in the end Change who I am, I belong to you. 
amazing love that welcomes me the kindness of mercy that bought with blood wholeheartedly my soul undeserved
Thank you, worship team. We appreciate you leading us in this time of praise and worship. Man, our God is so good. Well, what a privilege it's been and continues to be as we trail through this series of Team Jesus. Now, we've been talking about through the uh, last, quite a few, last several weeks, we've been talking about end times. And we've had the privilege of talking about uh, simply... Uh, the rapture, and how that Christ is going to come back and receive us unto himself. And so it's an amazing thing to know that we're going to get to go and to live with Jesus for the rest of eternity. Now, uh, that's going to happen at the beginning of the tribulation. The rapture is going to happen, then the tribulation starts. Then there's a series of events that take place, and we'll be seven in heaven uh, with the Lord, those who are... Uh, his children, those who have received Jesus as personal Lord and Savior of their life, they are a part of the family of God. They are the family of God. We will spend uh, then time in heaven with Jesus. And yet there will be a time on this earth, the time of tribulation, that's going to take place. And it's going to be for those who are left behind, those who have never given their life to Jesus and uh, it's a time where Satan is going to seek to rule and to reign, and he will, on this earth. And so we find that within the series of things that we talked about, uh, a couple weeks back we talked about the mystery of lawlessness. And so we find that the son of lawlessness, a man of lawlessness, or the man of sin, the Antichrist, the first beast, he will take rule and reign on the earth. And the whole world will give their allegiance to the Antichrist. Not only that, then uh, we also continued on this just this last week, and the title of the message was Fire from Heaven. And I talked to you about the false prophet and how the false prophet is going to be the one who promotes the Antichrist, the first beast, and the false prophet is known as the second beast. And so with that in mind, we're going to continue this series. He is a religious leader, uh, the false prophet is, speaking, uh, speaking things that are not true, that are not real, that are not uh, honest, they're not godly, they're not righteous. It's a false doctrine. It leads people into destruction. Ultimately, he's about uh, getting people to worship the first beast, and so how important it is for, it, for us to have an understanding of who he is and what he does. And so this week I want to talk to you about the harlot church. Now I've had people to ask me, Pastor, uh, will religion still be here during the tribulation? Will the church be here? Uh, of course, the first part of that is no, the church will not be here, not God's church, not uh, the, the bride of Christ because the bride of Christ will be raptured up out of this earth 
before the day of wrath or the tribulation starts. But there will be a church. It'll be the harlot church. It'll be the church of Satan. It'll be uh, his domain. Now, it's not going to be satanic worship, per se, and all that. Uh, it's going to have a good face on it, and it's still going to be religious. But yet, it's going to be a false religion, headed up by the false prophet. And we find, we're going to look here in our passage at Revelation chapter 17, beginning in verse number 3. All right, look with me if you would. It says, And he carried me away in the Spirit. Now, keeping in mind, this is John who is pinning this information. Uh, he was caught up into heaven, and, and, and God showed him all these things that he wrote in the book of Revelation for our understanding to the things that are to happen. And so we find he's writing this now. He says, And he carried me away in the Spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman setting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names. And it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abomination and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the, mar uh, of the martyrs of Jesus. Now, I just want to take a few moments and unpack this for you. I realize there's a lot of symbolism that happens in the book of Revelation, but it's for our understanding. And really, as you begin to understand it, it, it gives it more clarity. It makes more sense. The scripture tells us here in verse number 3, And he carried me away into the wilderness, and I saw a woman. This woman is the harlot church. This is a representation of the harlot church, the religious system of its day. Now we know this. We know that in the last days, uh, during the tribulation, there will be a one world religious system ultimately used to worship the first beast, the Antichrist, and to destroy, ultimately to destroy all mankind. Now that's really important to understand that because ultimately what Satan's end goal is, is to hurt God. He hates God and anything that represents God. He speaks blasphemous things against the church and against God and his people. And he wants to destroy God's people and God's church and all that represents God. He wants to destroy it. He wants the worship. He wants the praise. And he wants everything to do with God to be destroyed. And so he sets himself up. He tries to have this satanic trinity between the dragon, the first beast, and the second beast. That being Satan, the dragon. That being the first beast, the Antichrist. Second beast being the false prophet. Understanding this is the, uh, this is the satanic trinity, even as God has his holy trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Understanding that it is through the Son of God that we come to know the Father God. God the Father himself. Matter of fact, Jesus said, if you know me, you know my Father. And so it will be true with Satan. He will use the son of perdition, the man of sin, to be his representative. And as you know him, you will know Satan himself in that regard. And then you have the Holy Spirit, which is uh, God the Holy Spirit. He is the one who leads us and directs us to the worship and to the understanding of who the Son of God is, Jesus, in order that we can ultimately understand the Father. Even so, the false prophet is like the Holy Spirit in the unholy trinity, in the satanic trinity. He will promote the son of perdition. He will promote the Antichrist and worship to him and understanding of what he wants. And ultimately, to understand those things is to understand what Satan wants. And ultimately, Satan's end game, his end goal, is destruction of all mankind. 
that was made in the very image of God. Even those who don't worship God, even those who uh, have never put their allegiance to God, he wants to destroy them because they were made in the very image of God. And he can't stand it. That's his end game. And so we find that this one world religion is ultimately put together uh, simply to destroy all mankind. This is the harlot church. Her, her theme, her thought is simply again that you believe whatever you want but reject nothing because in your rejection you're but nothing but a bigot. And somehow there's this all-inclusive, believe everything, and, and we're all just trying to get to the same place, so we may all be coming from different paths, but at the end of the day, that is a false doctrine, and it's destructive, and it kills people, and it leaves people in ruin spiritually. And I want you to know that this harlot church is going to be a world religion. And therefore, we find in this passage that she is setting on a scarlet beast, that being the first beast. And the first beast, it says there in this passage, that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. That just simply has to do with the kingdoms of this world and that he is the ruler over all the kingdoms of the world and over all the powers of the world. And that's what that represents. And so the symbolism is of his, uh, uh, his political power and influence. And this harlot church is going to find its capability to achieve what it needs to achieve through the beast, the Antichrist. He is going to be the one who is used to, uh, to help this harlot church achieve the things that, need to, that she seeks to do and what she seeks to accomplish. And it goes on to say in verse number 4, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet. Now that, that's royalty and, and, and fineries and the, and the most admired things of life. I mean, this, this harlot church is going to be very impressive. It's going to be very powerful. It's going to have the... Uh, influence around the world globally. It's going to have the support globally of those around the world. Their allegiance are going to be to this harlot church. And it goes on to say, and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls. That just simply means not only does it have the prestige and the power, it also has the possessions that she desires. She is without uh, lack. She has it all. And then it says, holding in her hand a golden cup. When I think of somebody holding a fine china or something like a golden cup, boy, there is a sense of importance there and a sense of, of achievement, relaxation, uh, being in the sweet spot, being in the place of ease. And there she is, holding her golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual uh, uh, immorality. Understand this, that, that we, again, things that we read about is going to happen uh, during the tribulation may as well show reflections of that in our day to day. There are religious systems who, who embrace sin and and abominable things in the name of Jesus. And they make out like it's okay, you know, and this is what the scripture says that in the last days they, they will have a form of godliness but deny the very power, the essence of God. What is that? That's a person who is living in sin, who is never finding freedom from sin. They're not exercising the power of freedom from sin that God provides. They have a form of godliness. They show up to church. They pray. They do the things that satisfy that little longing of having some religious things in their life. That's what this is going to be about on a major scale. 
Today we see it. We see people that take the name of Jesus, that say they're followers of Christ, living abominable lives uh, in abomination, and they are uh, living in sexual immorality. We live in a world today of sexual immorality. Again, not that God's people are going to be found perfect, because we're not perfect. It's not that we're always going to get it right, but we're, we should always seek to make it right. We should repent and make things right. We should turn from our wicked ways and follow after Jesus. But there are some who live in their sexual immorality, taking the very same mindset as this harlot church, as though everything's okay and we can just live carefree and sexually carefree, uh, however we want to live, uh, shacking up together and doing things. I want you to know today that these things are wrong. And God calls them wrong and they're sin. And this harlot church seems to think that it's, it's all okay. And it's not. And it goes on to say, and on her forehead was written a name of mystery. All right? This, this uh, name written on her forehead simply in uh, Old Testament culture, uh, a, a harlot. A prostitute would oftentimes wear a signia on her forehead uh, that would uh, have a name or what that represented who she was. And it may be some kind of a, a, a name that represented her practice of life. And she was proud of it. And she'd wear that name as a signia on her forehead. And even so, uh, this harlot church is going to be in that same place. And it says, was written a name of mystery. Now in the Old Testament, a mystery was something that was hidden. But yet, a mystery in the New Testament is something that is revealed. It's a mystery that is being revealed. And that's what it's saying here in the New Testament, that this name of mystery is, she's going to be revealed. She's, it's not a secret anymore. She's not ashamed to be the person she is, flaunting her immorality and her abomination. And it says, that name, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And it goes on to say, John says, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints. In other words, there are many people that have been led astray, who have been led down a wrong path. I mean, it's even happening today in the world we live, where people are being led by false doctrine, led away from the truth. Never to be all that God wants them to be. Never ever finding that relationship with Jesus. Dying in their sin because they have embraced the, the false doctrine that Satan puts out there. But man, in the latter days, when the whole world is, is supporting this harlot church, when everybody seems to be going in this direction, it's going to be really hard for people to to deny it or to turn from it because it seems so right because everybody's involved. But yet, she will lead astray and, uh, with, and she will be drunk with the blood of the saints. And it goes on to say, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Yes, this harlot church will be a part of the system of, of martyrdom, of eliminating those that are followers of Jesus. Their blood will be shed by this church. Because simply their message is, if, it's, if, if there's any other message, then our message is wrong and it has to be destroyed. It has to be uh, eliminated. I want you to know, we may live in a rough time today, but we have the power of the Holy Spirit to lead us and we get to be the witnesses of Jesus and we get to be His followers and we get to trumpet the message of good news to a lost and dying world. Your friends, your neighbors, your relatives, they need it. And we need to share Jesus with them. But you may be here today and not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to know right here, right now, Jesus wants you to accept what He's done for you in His payment on the cross through His death, His burial, and His resurrection. He's paid the penalty of your sin on your behalf. But yet it is your responsibility to embrace what He's done for you and to have that conversation with Him and invite Him to come into your life. 
simply right now, you could do that. I would encourage you to bow your head, even if you want to kneel down and pray and just have that conversation with Jesus. Just let him know, Jesus, I realize I'm hopeless without you. I need you to be my Lord and Savior. I accept what you have done in paying the price for the penalty of my sin on the cross with your life. And in your resurrection, I receive new life. Come into my life and save me right now. And now thank him. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Hey, if you made that decision today, I want to encourage you, please shoot us a, a text, a message, an email. Let us know uh, of the decision that you've made. You could respond to this program here on Facebook or YouTube. Or you could go uh, to uh, your email and send us an email at millroad at gmail.com. Or even if you go to millroad.tv and, and there in the comment section, you could send us a message. Let us know of the decision that you made for Christ today. Those of you that are saved, are you living for Jesus? Are you living a life that brings honor and glory to Jesus? Or would you really have to say, that your life has been full of self-pursuits, of abomination in your life, of this impurity of sexual immorality and chasing after things that break the very heart of God and destroy your relationship with Him. The harlot church would want to tell you that's okay. It's not okay. God's not happy with that. God does not want you to live in the misery of sin. He died on the cross for you to set you free, to set you free from sin. Not only for the price for your eternal soul, but also that you could live life and that more abundant on this earth, being free from the shackles and the bonds of sin. My friend, are you committed to Christ? The Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Will you confess it to Jesus right now? Make it right with Him. Hey, God bless you, and thank you for being with us this morning. What a blessing to have you here in our service. And I want to invite you to come and be with us at Mill Road uh, on site at 80 West Mill Road on, at 1030 on Sunday morning. But again, if you can't do that, and this is your way to be a part uh, here online, we are thankful for you. Uh, please, if you would, uh, check into the service uh, online there so that you can be a part, lets others know what's going on. And please, once again, just throw us your love and likes. We appreciate that so much. God bless you, and we'll look forward to seeing you again at 1030 next week. Have a great day. Thanks for being with us today. If you enjoyed the experience, like, love, share, notify, and subscribe. No greater way to share God's Word to social media. Today we gave you multiple opportunities to worship. We first gave you a chance to worship with your voice through song. Then we gave you an opportunity to worship with your mind through the message. Now we're going to give you an opportunity to worship with your heart through tithes and offering. Open up your favorite web browser, click in the URL, type in millroad.tv. That will send you to our web page. If you click in the upper right hand corner, there's a give button. It will send you to our push pay system where you will be able to give a one time or reoccurring giving. We hope you enjoyed the experience today. We want to see you next time. God bless.